What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, the fallout begins with Saquon Barkley. Oh my goodness. Um, got a couple of texts from Rashid. He's hurt. He's hurt. Uh, you know, and I I'm wondering if the fans are mad at Barkley or mad at the team. Because, you know, I can't be mad at Barkley for wanting to get paid. He's out there, you know, he's been injured, you know, and he's been put himself on the line. He, you know, puts in the work, does everything the team asked him to. On the other side, I can understand the team. You know, he started out hot last year and kind of tailed off at the end of the season. He did have two seasons where he got hurt. But the reality of football is every player is one play away from a career-ending injury. In fact, I could say every player could be one play away from dying on the field. Damar Hamlin died on the field and was brought back. So all of these guys are putting themselves on the line. And if I'm Saquon, I'm looking and saying, and, and no, no disrespect to Daniel Jones, we understand quarterbacks are premium and stuff, you know. They're, they're not, regardless of Cowboy fans out there thinking that, you know, just get rid of Dak because we just find anybody else that'll be better. That's some bullshit right there. But be that as it may, be that as it may, um, getting a quarterback is not an easy situation. And running backs, unfortunately, have been deemed disposable. So, cop pizzle. Pizzle. Stop making babies. Stop being 60-minute man. I want to know how you feel at this moment about Barkley not getting that deal done. Are you mad at Barkley? Are you mad at the team? Now, Rashid, he's got the take of man, this is Odell all over again. We get guys that we like that have done the work and things and they don't take care of them. You know, this reminds me a little bit because I just had a deja vu moment. I'm here running to Home Depot because I need some shell pins. It's driving me crazy because I, I drilled the holes for the shelving pins and I want to put the shelves in. I want the kitchen to start looking like a kitchen instead of a damn mess, okay? And so that's why I'm going here to get these shell pins and some wire because tomorrow we're going to get that downstairs unit fired up and inspected on Thursday. But be that as it may, but let, let's stop right there. It hit me there because I realized what would happen. The commanders, formerly the Washington Redskins, they would have good players that they didn't sign new contracts to, and they would go out and they'd sign these absorbent contracts for guys who weren't on the team. They would let go of the good guys that they had, the ones that performed, the guys that weren't a pain in the ass or anything like that. They would let them go, and they'd do well at other places, but they wouldn't hold on to them, but then they would go ahead and spend a boatload of money for a guy like Adam Archuleta. Oh, man, we got to get Adam Archuleta. And we're going to make him the highest paid, uh, you know, cornerback back there. And you know, it's like, okay. They'd go out and they'd get Bruce Smith, who was only there to try and get the sack record. You know, who was past his prime. But then they'd have guys that were young, talented guys that were doing great things and not pay him. So that's the situation here. And, you know, the NFL, I don't know if the NFL has an agenda that they were basically saying, we don't want to go crazy here on these numbers. We want to start getting these numbers in line. You'll remember when Roger Goodell was talking about firing coaches. He said basically they had $100 million in dead money for paying coaches that were let go. And so they were looking at the bottom line and saying, you know, you got to do better with picking these coaches and give them more of a shot that you're not wasting money and paying off these contracts. Don't have to worry about that with the Cowboys because Lord knows Jerry Jones, he, he got every dime out of uh, Jason Garrett's contract. But I think also, too, 
last year's free agency was freewheeling. Everybody was just getting money and getting paid left and right. And nobody seemed to care how much money was going out. And we saw a lot of these players that didn't pan out that got paid. And I think that they started saying, wait a minute, let's get this shit under control. Let's stop fighting against ourselves. And let's just go ahead and say, this year, we're going to go ahead and break the backs of the players. Don't go crazy and free agency on these contracts. You see DeAndre Hopkins, who was getting, you know, $29 million cap hit, now is $13 million up to $16 million. You didn't see all of the crazy free agent frenzy uh, contracts that were out there. You know, you now look and see that running backs, Zeke Elliott, $16 million cap hit. Right now is zero because he's on no team. Dalvin Cook, a $14 million cap hit. Right now, zero because he's not on the team. And he's these aren't the only guys that are out there. There are other great running backs, Leonard Fournette and stuff, that are out here that aren't getting paid. So you look at this and say, they have broken the backs of that position. That franchise tag will probably go down because, quite frankly, the big number guys don't have the big numbers anymore. Barkley, ten million. Tony Pollard, ten million. Josh Jacobs, ten million. Beyond that, you got Alvin Kamara, who's at fourteen. Um, you've got Christian McCaffrey, who's at sixteen. And you just had um, Joe Mixon redo his contract that was going to be nine down to six. Miles Sanders. Four and a half. Ain't no money out there. Heck, kickers might be making more money uh, than, than running backs now. So let me go in here and grab this stuff, get back here, get these shelves in, and get ready for my live stream. Make sure you guys tune in tonight, 8 o'clock. I'm sorry, 9 o'clock Eastern, because we'll be getting live and talking about this, the Great Giants meltdown. And um, in case you didn't know, Barkley basically says he ain't showing up for camp which means he's going to show up week one so he gets that game check. Um, but will he be ready to play? I guess that's not my problem, is it? Ah, oh, man. Whew. My body is killing me from uh, up and down the steps and under the house, under the crawl space in the basement. Man, my feet hurt. My back hurts. My feelings hurt, but hey, at least I don't have any drama like the New York stinking Giants. Peace.